This was perhaps the greatest genius of the Emperor's plot. He had turned the Republic against itself. While the Republic played politics, the Emperor used the time to reconfigure his forces for the long push into the galactic core. All might have been lost in those early years had individual Jedi Masters and Republic military leaders waited for the Senate's orders. By taking matters into their own hands, they managed to slow the Empire's advances. The attack of the Sith Empire was the most well-orchestrated and carefully coordinated military maneuver in the galaxy's history. Indications suggest the operation took centuries of planning and preparation. I'll elaborate in my next report. The centuries preceding the Great War were a time of peace and growth for the Republic. Dozens of new star systems joined the Galactic Senate. For the Sith Empire, however, these centuries were marked by a rapid acceleration in the preparations for war. An effort in which the Sith showed surprising cooperation and sacrifice. I have long suspected that during this extended period, the Sith spent generations infiltrating Republic political circles and even the Jedi Order. Reviewing historical records, I have uncovered strong evidence of one such case. Izan Gint was a fourth-generation Jedi, widely considered to be the most promising Padawan in the Order. Having a similar heritage, the venerated Jedi scholar Master Baron Ver took Gint as his apprentice. Together, Ovair and Gint traveled the galaxy, studying the mysteries of the Force. Over the years, the pair became more and more ambitious, eventually undertaking a daunting mission. They set out to explore the ancient Sith temples on Yavin 4. Their goal was to investigate the final resting place of Naga Sadao, one of the most powerful Sith Lords who ever lived. Arriving on Yavin 4, Over and Gint discovered that Naga Sadao's twisted Masasi warriors had survived the centuries. The Masasi originated as a Sith subspecies, forming the backbone of the earliest Sith armies. But Naga Sadao subjected his Masasi followers to heinous experiments, turning them into dark force-wielding monsters. Gint and Master Over fought bravely against the Masasi, but they were defeated and forced to flee deep into the temple. There they encountered the dark energy still lingering in Naga Sadao's tomb. Weeks later, Master Over returned to the Jedi Temple on Coruscant, alone, wounded and half insane from the tortures he had endured. After a lengthy recovery, Master Over told the tale of the horrors he faced and of Gint's tragic death. Several years passed. Then one day, Isin Gint mysteriously reappeared on Coruscant, wearing the garb of the Masasi warriors and bent on killing Master Over. Possessed by the dark spirit of Naga Sadao, Gint attacked his former master in broad daylight. The brutal battle between the two was staged, with all the Republic watching. Gint's borrowed powers were formidable. But Master Over won the day. Over's triumph over darkness was celebrated, and the Jedi Council assumed that all was well. The question no one asked was this. Why would Naga Sadao's spirit seek vengeance, specifically against Master Over? The answer has become clear after a closer look at Over's Jedi heritage. His father and grandfather also went out of their way to visit the tombs of the ancient Sith Lords. They were a family of Sith infiltrators. Over's mission on Yavin 4 was not for the Jedi, 